You must wear a mask. You have to wear a mask. They must be at home. They have to be at home. Must or have to. In today's lesson, I'm going to teach you about these two verbs. I'm going to divide this lesson into two parts. Part one, choice. Part two, probability. What? Choice and probability? What's that? Don't worry, I will explain everything step by step. At the end of this lesson, I have a test for you with 10 questions. Can you please let me know how you did on the test? Did you get 10 correct out of 10? Or maybe six correct out of 10? Let me know, I really love hearing from you. Well, my name's Arnell. Let's start. First things first, the grammatical structures. You can see I have subject, must, have to, plus base verb. What's the base verb? Well, the base form of the verb is verb number one. Eat, ate, eaten. Play, played, played. Eat and play are the base form of the verb. You can see must remains the same for all subjects. I must go, you must go, he must go, he musts go, she must goes. The forms stay the same. You can see have to changes depending on the subject. I have to go, you have to go, but he, she, it has to go. And we always keep the base form after to. She has to goes, never. There's one more thing I want to add in this part. You might hear or see this. I have got to go. You have got to go. This is perfectly correct. It's just a little less formal. In today's lesson, I'm not going to go into have got to because I really just want to focus on must and have to. I do have a lesson on this topic. I'll leave this video link in the description and comments down below for you. Part one, choices. You can see my line here. I have no choice and your choice. What do I mean by that? Well, no choice means you cannot choose. We're talking about obligations like rules and laws. Your choice means you can choose. We can use must and have to when you do not have a choice. The verbs mean the exact same thing. Citizens must pay tax. Citizens are people um, who have a passport from that country. So for example, I can say, she is an Indian citizen. He is a Mexican citizen. Citizens have to pay tax. Notice the pronunciation, have to, have to. There's a th sound, have to. Yes, you can say, Citizens have got to pay tax, but again, I'm not going to focus on that. Students must wear a school uniform. Students have to wear a school uniform. No choice. If you want to hunt deer in these woods, you must have a hunting license. You have to have a hunting license. I know have to have seems strange, but there's have to plus the base form of the verb. Perfectly correct. Have to have. With all of my examples so far, you can see there's no choice. If you don't do these things, there will be a punishment. You might need to pay a fine. 
A fine is money you need to pay. It's a penalty. Or maybe you might go to jail. Those are punishments. Okay, so if we can use these verbs in the same way, are there no differences? Are they exactly the same? With rules and laws, must is more common in formal written English, official contexts. Let's look at a sign. Employees hmm, wash hands before leaving the restroom. Must or have to, which one do you think it is? Right, must. Have to is perfectly correct. You could see employees have to wash hands before leaving the restroom, but again, this is written. It's a sign. I want to show you a couple more examples of must being more common in written formal contexts. Imagine you want to visit the White House in the USA. Let's go. Here I have the White House website. You can visit the White House if you want. I'm going to quickly scroll through this. Must. 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 All of the examples with must give you a rule. There's not a single have to on this page. If you want to read the full sentences, I'll leave this um, website link in the description below for you. But I think you get the idea. Here's a common question. Is this American English or British English? Both must and have to are common everywhere. Let's say you want to visit Big Ben in London. The Big Ben tour is not suitable for everyone. Visitors must be age 11 and over. Visitors have to be age 11 and over? Perfectly correct, but again, this is written. Okay, I'll bring up the grammatical structures once again. Remember, earlier in this lesson, I said the forms stay the same. So, if the forms are always the same, how do we know if we're speaking about the past, the present, or the future? I think we need a chart. Okay, I have rules and laws here. We are still speaking about no choice, past, present, and future, and must and have to. Hmm, you can see with must, there's only one form. Citizens must pay tax. This is true now, right? Students have to wear a school uniform. This is also true now. When I was in school, I had to wear a school uniform. Next year, students will have to wear a school uniform. Here's a headline from nationalgeographic.com. You've had to cancel your vacation. Here's what to do next. Here we see the present perfect tense being used. So you can see have to is much more diverse in terms of tense. There is no musted. There is no will must. So in your speaking or writing, if you want to change the tense, you need to use have to. You have to use have to. Things change in the negative. Take a look. You can see, I must not go. You must not go. He, she, it must not go. The forms don't change. I do not have to go. You do not have to go. He, she, it does not have to go. Remember that does. The correct structure is subject, do not, have to, plus base verb. We do not say, I haven't to go. Look, in the negative, must not remain the same, no choice. 
Let's go to the zoo. Visitors must not touch the animals. I think that's clear. You must not do it. It's dangerous. Many zoos have a petting zoo. What's a petting zoo? A petting zoo is a mini zoo where you can go to pet the animals, like in this picture here. And the verb pet is this. So you can pet a cat. You can pet a dog. We have a petting zoo. You can pet the animals. Have you seen Jurassic World? In that movie, there's a dinosaur petting zoo. Anyway, if you go to a petting zoo, would someone say this? You must pet the animals. You have to pet the animals. No, nobody would say that. It's not a rule or a law. Nobody is going to take your hand and force you to pet the animals. Would someone say, you must not pet the animals? No, if you must not pet the animals, why have a petting zoo? It's your choice, right? You can pet the animals or not. We can say, you don't have to pet the animals. You can pet them if you want, or you can just look and take pictures. It's your choice. I want to give you another example. Let's compare two different parks. Ah, it's a sunny day. It's the perfect day to take your dog out. In park A, we can see a sign. Dogs must be on leash and under control at all times. This is a leash. Hmm, shouldn't this say on a leash? Well, with signs, articles a and the are often removed. We can see a dog walker here with her dog on a leash. She is following the rules. Very good. In Park B, your dog doesn't have to be on a leash. It's your choice. Here, we have some dogs playing together. Maybe this is a dog park. But this couple decided to keep their dog on a leash. You can see don't or doesn't have to means your choice, whatever you want. Question, in which park will you need to pay a fine if your dog is not on a leash? Right, park A. We've looked at rules and laws, but what if we're speaking about personal obligations? For example, I must stop worrying so much. I must fix the sink today. The dripping is driving me crazy. You must remember to thank Julie for the flowers. With these examples here, you can see these obligations are coming from the speaker. This is perfectly correct. However, this is more common um, in British English. Americans would tend to use have to. I have to stop worrying so much. I have to fix the sink today. You have to remember to thank Julie for the flowers. I have to. I have to. I have to what? What's the verb? This is really common, especially in spoken English. If the verb is already clear, you do not need to repeat it. In this specific episode, he means I have to kill someone, but he doesn't need to say it. Everyone in that room, they know what he's talking about. We should invite Dan and Julie to our party. Do we have to? Or less commonly, must we? It's clear speaker B means, do we have to invite them? Must we invite them? Okay, let's move on to part two. Part two, probability. What's probability? I'll explain that as we go through the lesson. Here we have Nick. What do you think Nick's favorite color is? Hmm, 
hmm, blue t-shirt, blue walls, everything is blue. His favorite color must be blue. His favorite color has to be blue. His favorite color has got to be blue. But do I know this? Am I 100% sure? No, I've never met Nick. I'm 95% sure. This is what probability is. When we look at the evidence around us, so we feel very strongly about something. It's like the very first example I gave you in this lesson. They must be at home. I don't know that. I didn't see them inside, but their lights are on. They must be at home. They have to be at home. In your grammar books, you might see the term deductions. This is the same thing. When you look at a situation, you look at the evidence and you come to a conclusion. But again, you're about 95% sure. You don't know this is an absolute fact. Hmm, how old do you think Leanne is? I've never met Leanne. I've never seen her passport, I don't know. She must be in her 20s. She has to be in her 20s. In English, when we say someone is in their 20s, in their 30s, in their 40s, etc., we mean between the ages 20, 29, 30, 39, 40, 49. I can say my parents are in their 60s. So Leanne must be, has to be in her 20s. I don't have any bread at home. Do you think the gas station will have bread? They must have bread. They have to have bread. Everyone buys bread. Honey, I bought this sweater for you to wear to my parents' Christmas party. You must be joking. You have to be joking. We can take a picture that Christine and Frank did last year. Just like part one, things change in the negative and past. Present. Leanne must be in her 20s. Leanne has to be in her 20s. I'm almost certain. But how can we express the opposite? How can I say something is impossible? Leanne can't be in her 20s. Leanne cannot be in her 20s. Leanne mustn't be in her 20s. Leanne doesn't have to be in her 20s. You can see the change is pretty dramatic in the negative. Let's take this to the past. When Leanne graduated from medical school, she must have been in her 20s. She had to have been in her 20s. I know the structure is pretty long. Subject must have plus past participle. Subject had to have plus past participle. The past participle is verb number three. Eat, ate, eaten. Play, played, played. Eaten and played are my past participles. How can we make this negative in the past, impossible in the past? Leanne started medical school when she was 27. She can't have graduated in her 20s. She couldn't have graduated in her 20s. Impossible. Some of you might be wondering, but what about the future? Well, there isn't really a future form for this. We would use other structures. For example, she will probably graduate in her 20s. She's going to graduate in her 20s. There isn't really a specific um, form for these, for the future. Let's do another example. Imagine you have a history test and you see this question. What year did the Titanic sink? 
sink is an irregular verb. Sink, sink, sunk. I didn't study for the test, but I feel pretty strongly about this. The answer must be 1912. The answer has to be 1912. I mean, 1880 is too early. 1950 is too recent. It must be 1912. Let's make this impossible. The answer can't be 1950. The answer cannot be 1950. That's impossible. So we're using the present because we're talking about the test now. But let's take this to the past, to the actual event. Hmm. The Titanic must have sunk in 1912. The Titanic had to have sunk in 1912. Past impossibility. The Titanic can't have sunk in 1950. It couldn't have sunk in 1950. If it had sunk then, we'd have better pictures of it, but we don't. Have you seen the movie Titanic? I love that movie. If you haven't seen it, maybe you've heard of it. We're going to watch a little clip. And of course, I'm not going to explain the whole movie. That would take three hours. But in this movie, some people are searching for a very special diamond. They don't know where it is. But this character, he's pretty certain he knows where the diamond is. So the diamond had to have gone down with the ship. Hmm. So the diamond had to have gone down with the ship. Based on the evidence, he's 95% certain. Notice how he contracts to and have. Had to have. Had to have gone down with the ship. So the diamond had to have gone down with the ship. So the diamond had to have gone down with the ship. Let's do one more example before the test. Is this your phone? No, it must belong to one of my students. It has to belong to one of my students. I mean, who else? It can't belong to one of my students. I have a very strict no phones in class rule. Imagine the teacher puts the phone on her desk has her lunch break, she comes back and the phone is gone. Well, a student must have taken their phone. A student had to have taken their phone. Who else? A student can't have taken the phone. A student couldn't have taken the phone. My office was locked during my lunch break. Maybe it was another teacher? How are you feeling? Let's move on to the test. Test time! 10 questions in total. Can you please choose the best answer for each question? Pause the video to do this. Okay, here are the answers. How did you do? Please let me know your score in the comments below. I love reading them. I love reading your comments. Thank you so much. I'll explain the answers in case you're curious why you got something wrong. But to do this, I need my notes because I haven't memorized all of the, um, the answers. <laughs> okay, are you ready? Number one, must not is clear. It's illegal to text while driving. Number two, has to because the subject is she. She has to. Number three, it's your choice. You can wear a costume or not. Number four, last year. So the past is clear. And this wasn't our choice. We were forced to do this because we were sick. Number five, again, this is a law. Number six, well, if a restaurant is always really busy, you are 95% sure they have good food. Number seven, we need has to because a subject is he. And if someone does something five days a week, you can be pretty certain that they enjoy it. Number eight, can't because we 
think that's impossible. Brothers with two different nationalities are not so common. Number nine, we need the past form because we see saw. Is it possible to use option C? Grammatically, yes, but it's a logical conclusion that the same product comes from the same store. Number 10, something was impossible. I was in New York last week. I can't be in two places at the same time. Wow! Thank you so much for watching this lesson. I hope you learned something new. And I'll see you next time. Bye!